chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50. And I want to begin our reading at verse number 20. Genesis chapter 50. And I want to begin our reading at verse 20. It's a very familiar text. You find these words recorded as it is found in the New American Standard. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result, to preserve many people alive. So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. And I want to read it one more time for your hearing. It'll make more sense when we put it together. As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result, to preserve many people alive. So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. And I want to use for a thought, the thing that was supposed to have broke me made me thing that was supposed to have broke me, made me better. Will you agree with me that life is not always fair? And the truth be told, some of the things that you encounter, you tend to ponder and question, why me? Has anybody ever asked the question when you're going through the ups and downs of life, why me? I, I try to be a good person. I try to look out for folk. I try to do good by folk. And yet, and still, it seems like things still happen to me. Why me? Out of all of my friends, young ladies, out of all of my friends, uh, we were all kind of promiscuous. Why did I end up pregnant? Why did that guy treat me like a queen until he got me pregnant and then all of a sudden he walked away and left me by myself? Ah, I never smoked, I never drank, but why was my child born with special needs? Why, right. why, why, why me, why, why me? There were so many others that did so much wrong. Why me? Uh -huh. My money and, and my patience doesn't match up for a child with regular needs, but yet and still now I have a child that requires extra. Why? Why me? Brothers, everybody thought she was cute. I wasn't the only one. How did I come up with an STD and nobody else did? Why? Why? Why me? Why? Why me? So many times when we think about the ups and downs and the situations of life, that question rings true over and over again. Why? Why me? Okay. I eat right. I exercise uh, daily. How is it that other folk don't eat right and don't exercise and I end up with a heart attack? Why? Why me? Okay. Again, when we stop and we ponder over the wide scenarios, the list goes on and on. So we can collectively agree that we are all from one time or another have these wide me moments. Uh -huh. But the beauty of it all is that when you are a child of God, there's purpose behind your pain. I can put my kids yes, down now. There, there's purpose behind your pain. I can handle my pain a little bit differently when I know that there's purpose behind 
my pain. What are you talking about, preacher? The scripture says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And all right. Check. I love the Lord, and because I love the Lord, everything that I'm going through is working together yes, for my good. Yes, sir. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Ah, there, there's purpose behind my pain. Well, brother pastor, that sounds good. Uh, and on the flip side of that, that sounds cliche-ish. There's purpose behind my pain. Sounds <laughs> weighing like something that ought to be on the back of a, of a t-shirt. But, but what does that truly mean? There's purpose behind my pain. Our experiences are essential to exemplify the extraordinary power of God in our lives. What do what, what you say about this 101? You can't justify that he's bread if you ain't never been hungry. You, you can't testify that he's water if you've never been thirsty. You can't tell that he's a wonderful counselor if you've never gone through any sleepless nights. But I double dog dare you to go through some things and, and run out of options of other people to talk to. And the old folks say, just a little talk with Jesus. Yes, sir, makes it all right. Will make everything all right. So the purpose is to inspire. The purpose is to encourage. And oftentimes it comes by way of your pain. Somebody is going to help, be helped by me telling what he did for me. But I need to hurry to tell you that when the fame of God is on your life, there's a bullseye on your back. And the sad reality is that oftentimes the bullseye is placed on your back by somebody close to you. Mm. Or somebody you know, Lord, deliver me from those who don't want to see me grow. And so it is with the story of Joseph. The Bible says that Joseph had favor on his life. The Bible never declared that Joseph was perfect. Bible said that he had favor on his life and the funny thing about it is that other people tend to see the favor of God on your life as well as people tend to be threatened by the favor of God that's on your life. Here it is. Joseph was born uh, to Jacob. He was, he was born to Jacob in his old age and, and, and he had favor. He found favor with his daddy. And I'll put another kickstand down there. He, he found favor with his daddy to the point where his daddy gave him a, a special coat to wear to signify that he was special. Nobody else saw the specialness in him but his daddy. Y'all look at it in a minute. His daddy seen the specialness uh -huh. in him that nobody else saw. He, he, he found favor with his daddy. Might not have been with his mama. Might not have been with his sister and his brother. But he found favor with his daddy. And so, Wayne, sometimes people can't see the specialness in you. But the fact of the matter is that your daddy saw favor in you. Your daddy saw the goodness in you when everybody else wrote you off. Your daddy. Y'all look at it in a minute. Your daddy yes, saw favor that you when everybody else thought you wasn't going to be nothing when when everybody else turned their backs on you I'll stay right there Go myself. Ahead. when everybody else washed their hands with you your daddy saw favor with you and so it was that his daddy saw favor with him uh -huh. and uh I would say around 17 years old he went out and he he had a dream and and, and Joseph was able, he was gifted in the fact that he can interpret dreams. And, uh -huh. and then one thing I need to tell you, you got to be careful with who you tell your dreams to. Uh, because people don't always pray for you. People will pray against you. Yeah, and so it was that he shared his dream with his brothers. He shared his dream with his family. He shared his dream with those that he thought he could confide in. But in the midst of it all, the favor that J Joseph had on his life, his family was jealous of the favor and they sought out to hate him because of the dream that he told. And so here it is. First thing I need to tell you, don't be surprised when your haters are revealed. Mm. 
don't Come be on. surprised when they are revealed. Uh, sometimes you, it'll take a while for you to figure out who they are because uh, some of them, some of them sit in the house with you. Some, some of them, some of them eat the same cornbread and beans and rice and gravy and pork chops with you. Some of the same ones share the same blood. Now y'all get it a minute. Come on. Share the same bloodline, which you got to be careful. Don't be surprised when your haters are revealed. And so it was that these brothers, family. Uh, sought out uh, against Joseph because of the favor on his life. Uh, here it is. He had respect for his brothers. He looked up to his brothers, those for who he loved, those for who he respected, those were when his big brothers left, he wanted to go with them. When his big brothers passed out clothes, he wanted to receive them. He, he looked up to his big brothers, but the fact of the matter is because there was favor on his life, they uh -huh. hated him and they figured out a way to bring him down. Uh, mama, mama used to say something like this. Mama said that misery loves company. Loves company. Have you ever ran across an individual who, who ain't never got nothing positive to say and always wants you to feel the same way? You can be smiling. You can have a smile on your face. You can feel good. And as soon as you come in contact with this individual, you find yourself frowning just like they are. The favor of God gives light. And, and do you not know that the folk want to put your light out? Mm. Let God start blessing you. Let God start coming through for you. Let God start uh, bringing things and manifesting things in your life. And watch how folks start looking. Watch how folks start acting. Yeah, the same yeah, folks yeah. that wanted to be around you when you were down, they're the same ones that don't want to be around when you come up. Ah, yeah, yeah, now yeah. the clerk and say, we fall down, but we don't stay down. We get back up. And the fact of the matter is everybody don't want to see you get up. That's right. Here it is. Not only... Do you not be surprised when your haters are revealed? Second thing is, watch the traps that are set for you. Mm. Uh, his brothers, they sought out and started plotting to try to figure out how to take Joseph, Joseph out. Even, the Bible says, even when he was, chapter 37 says, even when he was still a distance away, they started plotting against him. Folk are plotting against your demise, for your demise right now. And the, and the sad part about it is, uh, in Joseph's case, it was family. Uh, let me stay there. It was, it was, it was, it was family that, 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 that sought out uh, to, to destroy him, it was it was family. So here it is. They they demise it. They, they, they sought out to destroy him. They decided that they were going to put him in a pit, and they, they they wanted to put him in a pit and leave him there. And so so many times we have those that are closest to us want to put us in a pit. They want to put us somewhere and leave us for dead. But what I get excited about is when you leave me for dead, God still got my heart beat. When you, yes, when you want to walk away from me, God, God has still got me beat. God still has something yet for me to do. And so here it is. They, they planned to take him out. But when they planned to take him out, God had a different plan for Joseph. The Bible says, uh, folk are plotting against him right now. And David says, when my when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. When you do what the Lord says to do, no matter what folks say, folk, 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 I found out that, that folk are fickle. Folk are sometimes. Folk are up and down. And so uh, when you do what the Lord says do, uh, 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 he has a way of covering you. He has a way of protecting you. Even when they want to destroy you, he has a way of covering you. And so here it is. Even when the enemy is at an all-time high, uh -huh. ah, he lets me know that it's dinner time. What are you talking about, Bishop? It's, it's, it's dinner time because... Psalms 23 and 5 says that he prepares uh -huh. a table before me in 
the very presence of my enemies. He, he, he lets me know that I can still flourish when my enemies want to take me out. He lets me know that I can still win even when my enemies want me to lose. Here it is. Joseph's brothers decided they wanted to destroy him. They left him in a pit and, and, and he, 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 was, he was delivered from the pit because if you go do your homework in, in the book of Genesis throughout the story of Joseph, you will continue to see over and over and over again every situation that Joseph found himself in. The Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph. He was in the pit, and the Lord was with Joseph. Uh, the Bible says that he was taken out. He was taken to a palace to work for the king and, 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 and Potiphar, and Potiphar's wife tried to make a pass at him, and when he rejected the pass that he made, yeah, it's, it's some young and restless stuff in the Bible. When, 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 when she tried to make a pass at him, he, he turned it down. She got mad and said that he tried to rape her. And in the midst of that, he ended up in the prison. He goes from the pit to the palace to the prison. But the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph. And I need to tell you that even in the midst of everything that you're going through, you're going to go through some ups, you're going to go through some downs, but the Lord will continue to be with you. Yes, sir. The Lord was with Joseph. And here it is. After all of his, his, his family, his family had turned their backs on him, his family had sold him out of him. He found himself in all of these different calamities and, and these different ups and downs in life. The Lord was continuously with him. There came a time when their daddy died. Jacob got ready to die. Jacob died. All of the brothers came together. And after their daddy died, uh, these brothers knew that, that, that he was going to get back at them for what they did. So I need to tell you, I'm getting out of here. Don't be surprised when your haters are revealed. Watch, brothers and sisters, watch the traps that are set for you. But lastly, I want to tell you, live your blessed life because he is with you. Oh, yes. Ah, live your blessed life, your best blessed life because he's with you. Mm -hmm. Bible says after Jacob died, all of these brothers, these, these family members that had, did Joseph so bad, Joseph had the opportunity to get back at them because Joseph continued to have favor on his life. And he had, he was in a position, he was in a high position where he could have snapped a finger and got back at them for what they did. Joseph had the opportunity, but he didn't. And that's, that's, that's the hardest thing for us to do uh, when folk do you bad. Not to want to retaliate. That's that's one of the hardest things to do when folks scandalize your name. Not to get back. It's it's the hardest thing to do when when folk mean you no good and all they're trying to do is harm you. To stop and not retaliate. But here it is. Joseph shows us the blessing in not retaliating. He stands before his brothers. They sent a spy out and tell him, go, go tell Joseph that it wouldn't be wise. We want, we want, we want, he, he should forgive his brothers for what they did to him. Joseph stands before them, and that's what he says. He tells them, as for you, you meant evil against me. You meant to take me out. My family, my my blood, we we slept in the same room. We shared the same bloodline. We, we are family and you meant evil against me. But God, mm. God, God meant it for my good. My good. God, God, God turned that thing around. What you, what you meant to take me out, what you meant, and I need to tell you that some of us in here, there are some things that happened in our life that was meant to break us. 
And, and some of us are sitting here with band-aids all over. Now you might not have no band-aid physically, but you're sitting there broken. You're sitting there scarred. You're sitting there bruised. And the fact of the matter is those things that you went through in life was meant to break you, but God kept you together. And in the midst of him keeping you together, you are not broken, but you're better. Amen. It helps me. It helps me to keep pushing when I know that God is with me. It helps me to keep my head up in the midst of what, yeah, I'm the preacher, I'm, I'm the pastor, but I go through stuff too. But the fact of the matter is, is that God, in the midst of what I'm going through, he keeps me in his perfect care. He keeps me, and I know that he keeps me. I've lost a lot. I've gained a lot, and I've lost it again. But the fact of the matter is that he kept me. Amen. Old folks said it like this, he's a keeper. And so here it is. Joseph said, what y'all meant to destroy me, God meant it for my good. And here it is. He says, watch this. He said, God meant it for my good in order to bring about this present result. I preached a sermon some years ago that said this had to happen. This, this had to happen. These, this family turning their back on Joseph had to happen to make him better. Mm. Some of the things that you went through in life, it had to happen to make you better. When you were going through it, it didn't seem like, didn't feel good, but it had to happen to make you better. I'm able to console somebody else that's lost a loved one. Lil Wayne, I'm able to do it now because God allowed my parents to be taken away. And so, so now that I don't have parents and I weathered the storm, now I can help somebody else to let them know that everything is going to be all right because they're in a better place. But had that not happened to me, all I can do is refer to what somebody else has gone through. But he says, he says, God meant it for good in order to bring us about to this present result. Now, God could have turned this thing around and, 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 and Joseph could have been bitter, got back at his brothers, and God would not have gotten the glory out of it. But because Joseph was obedient to God, he brought those brothers back together again. And so here it is. I'll leave you now. The thing that was supposed to, to break me made me better. And there might be some of you that have been broken. There might be some of you that are broken right now. Because all of us feel we, we can put up a good front. And we let people think that everything is all right. And we're so broken on the inside. But that thing that was supposed to make you crazy, that thing that, that you went through in life that was supposed to have you committed, and you're still standing here today as that man in Mark 5, sitting here clothed in your right mind, you can testify and it was meant to break me. That relationship was meant to break me. That financial storm I went through was meant to break me. Losing that job was meant to break me. But I would have never got to where I'm at right now had it not happened. And you can testify that it made me Some of us had to go through some storms and now we had peace because we were broken. It was meant to break us, but it made us better. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you, O oh God, for the ups and downs and the trials and tribulations, the ins and outs of life that we have endured. 
God, you never promised that we would not go through. But you did promise, God, that you would be with us. And as it was that you were with Joseph, we're grateful to you that you are with us. So God, we ask that you would continue to strengthen us in the areas that we need strengthening. Yes, Lord. In those areas that we want to give up, that we want to throw in the towel. Grant us strength right now, God. Please, God. We're dealing with a lot, God, and, and, and there are so many that are dealing with tragedy. And God, we pray now that you would have your way. We pray now, God, for your protecting arm around each and every one of us. You said that you were able to try every tear from our eyes. We ask for peace right now, God, that peace that Paul talked about that surpasses all understanding. We ask for favor. We're not perfect. We've made many mistakes. And truth be told, we're going to make some more. But it's because of your grace and your mercy that you grant us another chance. And oh God, we're thankful for it. As the scripture declares, give us this day our daily bread. Feed us manna from hell, heaven, from heaven, God, that we shall not want no more. We pray for these, your people who have came. And we pray that your word has fallen on good ground. And it will reap bountiful harvest in due season. We thank you, O oh God, and we praise you in the mighty, matchless, marvelous name of Jesus the Christ. And we pray it all. Let the people of God say amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand.